How's it going, folks? I'm Des with Desmond, and this is the brand new Wahoo Kicker Bike, which is Wahoo's entry into the interactive smart bike trainer market, which allows you to have a dedicated bike to hook up to online cycling training platforms like Zwift without you having to actually take your bike and mount it to a direct drive bike trainer. So in this video, I'm gonna go through all the features of the Kicker Bike, as well as my review of what I liked about it, as well as what I think could be a little bit better. Oh, and by the way, if you haven't seen the videos by this guy. For you? Yeah or maybe even this guy. I'll have the links for both DC Rainmaker as well as GP Llama's videos in the description below. Wahoo's pretty well known for its kicker direct drive bike trainers. And even though this is called a kicker bike, it's not that they just put a bike on top of a kicker trainer. That's actually quite a bit different. The kicker bike uses an electromagnetic resistance system, which is a departure from the system they use in their past kicker trainers and more closely resembles the same resistance system that's employed by the Tax Neo line of trainers. However, the kicker bike has a ride feel that's all its own, and in some ways I think it's great, and in some ways I actually prefer the Neo, but more details on that after we go over some of the specs. So it can provide up to 2200 watts of resistance, which I think is enough for like 99% of the people on this planet. It has AMP plus FEC as well as Bluetooth FTMS, which means it can pretty much connect to any indoor cycling training platform of your choice via something like an Apple TV. The flywheel weighs 13 pounds, which is pretty respectable, which helps that ride feel. And then it has a claimed power accuracy of plus or minus 1%. Now those are all the specs that you typically want to hear out of a direct drive bike trainer, but since this is kind of a bike in the box, there's going to be a lot more that you're going to want to know about it. And the first one is going to be how you customize the fit. The first thing about the kicker bike is that unlike pretty much any other smart bike that's on the market today, you can not only customize the seat post height, which is just like any normal bike with a convenient quick release lever, but you can actually customize the standover height of the top tube, just like you'd be choosing the size of a normal frame, like a 50, 54, 56, etc. You'll adjust this via a lever that just unlocks and then you release this button pin sort of thing. And then you can just slide the entire top portion of the bike up the main center column of the bike. The same sort of lever is used to adjust the fore and aft of the saddle. And then it's also the same sort of mechanism that you'll use to adjust the reach, which now brings us to the cockpit. So what you're gonna notice is that this is a standard stem as well as a standard handlebar. So you can kind of customize this as you wish. So you can use the same stem and handlebar combination that you have on your outside bike. So to get just the right fit, you very well could just play around with all the adjustments until you kind of find what works for you. But Wahoo's actually employed three different methods in their app to make the setup process a lot easier. The first of which is that you can simply enter your numbers if you've already had a professional fit from Guru, Retool, or Trek Precision Fit. And then the second is that you can enter your dimensions and then it'll kind of give you a good place where you can start with your fit and then you can tweak it from there. But the last way, which I think is pretty darn neat, is that you can actually take a photo of your bike and then it'll give you the position for each of the components to more closely resemble the fit of your outside bike. Oh, and one last thing is that you may have noticed that there's five different holes in the crank arm. So there's actually five different crank arm lengths that you can choose through them. All right, so that's a lot so far, but now let's actually talk about the controls. The shifter brake lever combination is actually quite close to what you'd find in real life, which oddly enough is rather unique in current smart bike offerings. And what's cool is that you configure the controls to mimic a host of different types of shifter configurations, whether you have Shimano DI2 or mechanical, SRAM ETAP or mechanical, as well as Campy. And while we're talking about drivetrain, you'll also have the ability to choose between one, two, or three chain rings, compact and standard if you're choosing a double, and even choose the particular cassette configuration. So lots of options there. So there's gonna be buttons all over the shifters resemble the different shifter configurations, but you also may notice these buttons on top of the shifters. These two on the left, these are kind of neat and brings us to probably the neatest and most unique feature of the kicker bike. And that's the fact that the kicker bike can simulate gradient changes up to 20% incline and all the way down to a 15% decline. And then many of you may be familiar with the kicker climb accessory that you can purchase that can do the same thing, but Wahoo basically just crammed one of these into the kicker bike. But the nice thing about this integration is that it pivots the bike from the center point rather than the rear axle, which in my opinion feels a little bit more natural. So with compatible indoor cycling platforms like Zwift that have gradient changes, the entire bike will tilt depending on the grade that's being simulated in the program. And then going back to those two buttons, you can use those two buttons to adjust the grade manually. And if for some reason you don't like this or you kind of get seasick easily, you can always just lock the bike via this little button on the side of the display module that's located along the front right portion of the top tube. And then on this little module on top, you'll have an indicator of the gear that you're in depending on the configuration that you've set up in the app. On the bottom of the module is one, but only one USB port where you can plug in your phone. However, the port is located on the bottom of this little module, which isn't necessarily the most convenient location. All right, so with all that out of the way, how does it ride? 
That 13 pound flywheel spins up pretty quickly and once you get to speed it holds inertia really well. But it's kind of interesting because I actually tend to prefer the downhill simulation and the Neo trainers as they feel like they push you along just a little bit more. Another thing that the kicker bike doesn't have, at least at this time, is road surface simulation, which can be found in the Neo, which can simulate a host of different surfaces like gravel, wood, cobbles, and stuff like that. But overall, in comparison to the Neo bike, the kicker bike feels a lot more natural because it actually has a bit of give to it when you ride it, and this is both side to side as well as fore and aft. The Neo bike is stiff, like really stiff, and it doesn't have much give to it. The advantage of that is that your power is transferred directly to the pedals, but the disadvantage is that over time it can be a little bit fatiguing, kind of like an extremely stiff aluminum bike versus a supple carbon frame. Now the Tax Neo bike does have some good stuff going for it, and hopefully I'll do a review on someday, but overall I really like the ride of the kicker bike. And then finally, let's talk about power accuracy. On this just riding along Zwift session that I did right here, the numbers line up really well. Over the course of the ride, it was only about 3 watts off versus a pair of Fevero Asioma Duo pedals, which have proven to be a pretty darn accurate source of power accuracy. And then if we take a look at these sprints I did in the second half, we're within just 1.5 watts of each other for the average, and then you'll notice it's extremely close for these last two sprints. When it comes to erg mode, I'm actually going to refer to GP Llama, aka Shane Miller's Llama lab test that he just did on the latest firmware, but what you can see here is that everything lines up pretty well with not too much to complain about. I'll leave a link in the description below to his video where he goes over all the details. So I think the kicker bike is pretty darn good, but it's not perfect just like anything else in life. So the first thing is that even though it's a belt driven system and you don't even have the variable of the drivetrain noise involved, I expect it to be a little bit quieter than it is in real life. There's a pretty evident whirring sound that comes out of the bike. And what's funny is that it's not that it gets louder as you go faster. It kind of just changes at different cadences. The other thing I experienced was a little bit of creaking that came out of the bike. So there are a lot of contact points in the bike and when I was really laying down a lot of power, that's when I experienced a little bit more creaking. Oh, and then one last thing is that unlike the Neo bike, there's no sort of tray or platform where you can place your phone, even though it does have that USB charging on the bottom here. So you may have to buy a kicker desk or some sort of accessory from Amazon to be able to hold anything that you want to have close by. And then on that note, there's actually no fan system as well like the Neo bike. Now the fans in the Neo bike, they aren't amazing by any means, but they do have something. And I could complain about the price because the kicker bike is basically at the top level of all these smart interactive bike trainers out there. However, it does have the most features of them all. So at the end of the day, I really like the kicker bike. I like the ride feel quite a bit. The customization options are kind of ridiculous. The shifter configuration is pretty awesome, but just like anything else, there's a little bit of room for improvement. Anyhow, if you liked the video, go ahead and hit that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel for plenty of more sports tech videos that are coming soon. And in the meantime, happy riding.